So let's talk about lymphedema. Let's talk about why in the world do we do it? Why did we want to do it at the heart hospital? Why do you even want to hear about it today? Well, first of all, we can look at the fact that it's everywhere. 100 million people worldwide have lymphedema, 10 million in this country. Now, some sources will tell you that that's grossly underestimated um, because we don't recognize it. It goes unrecognized, undiagnosed. There are a limited number of certified therapists in not only in Arkansas, but in this country. There are very few centers to treat these patients. And the centers that we do have oftentimes won't treat your patient population. They certainly won't treat my patient population, my patients with heart failure, chronic kidney disease, peripheral arterial disease. We actually recently had a center tell us that they have a quote-unquote policy that does not permit them to treat patients with PAD. Well, now, there's, there's something to that, but where does that leave our patients? Where does it leave your patients? What do we do? They don't want to take care of sick people. What do we do? We take care of sick people. So despite all the things that you've seen today, you saw um, some venous insufficiency yesterday, talked about the great results that we get with radiofrequency ablation. You've seen some of the phenomenal things, not just today, but in the past, that our interventional cardiologists do to restore blood flow. But despite all of those things, we kept seeing patients come into the clinic with persistent edema, recurrent cellulitis, and wounds. <clears throat> now, when your whole program is built on restoring and preserving function and saving limbs, it's not really the outcome you want to have, is it? Certainly wasn't the outcome that we wanted to have. So we identified a need, but it's not just a need that we saw in our patient population. There was an expectation that the patients who come to Arkansas Heart Hospital have for us to do something about this. There's an expectation that you have when you send your patients to us. You want results. You don't want them back in your office going, well, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit better, but come on. Can't you do better than that? Not only that, but we are a heart hospital. Our core values and our mission statement demand that when we identify need, that we find a way, and that's exactly what we do. There's nothing more patient-centered than that. We identify a need. We attack that need. So here's why it's important to you. This is your patient population. There's probably not anybody out there that hasn't come across this at some point. So what we did is we set up base camp, just like they did when they decided to tackle Everest. The end of last year, we set forth our journey to get acclimated, to get educated, and to figure out how to take care of this patient population. We saw our last patient, or our, I'm sorry, our first patient for evaluation the last week of February. On March 1st, we started the climb, and we saw our first patient. So what is lymphedema? Lymphedema is an insufficiency. We heard about insufficiency yesterday on the vein side. Well, this is an uh, insufficiency in the lymphatic system. You have a disparity or a discrepancy between the lymphatic load and the body's ability to transport that load. You end up with an end-stage irreversible lymphatic failure that leaves you with the limb like that. The three types of lymphedema dynamic, mechanical, and combined. This is not rocket science. What you have in a dynamic insufficiency is you have a normal functioning lymphatic system that's been overloaded. So the lymphatic load exceeds the body's ability to transport that. Conditions like this, chronic venous insufficiency, there's that bias, uh, immobility, heart failure, pregnancy. I had a physician today in the audience who mentioned to me, boy, yeah, we had a lot of that, a lot of that lymphedema in our pregnant women. Mechanical. This is more of a low volume situation. This is when you kind of start to see it. Up there in the, in the dynamic stage, in the early stage, you don't really recognize that maybe as lymphedema. But when you get down to the mechanical stage, you start seeing some things there and you go, well, I mean, this is not looking good. You've got an underlying functional or organic cause that the system itself is beginning to fail you now. So your transport capacity itself is not able to manage a normal load. This is sometimes referred to as secondary as well. These are your surgery patients, post-op lymphedema, radiation patients, think about our breast cancer patients, uh, trauma, and then chronic inflammation. And then we get to the big ugly. The big ugly at the bottom is combined. Everything's kind of failed. 
We didn't do anything about it when it was dynamic. We didn't do anything about it when it was mechanical. So now we're crashing and burning with combined lymphedema. It's progressive. It's ugly. Everything's going wrong. Transport capacity is not there. Lymphatic load is, not, is out the roof. And we have severe tissue damage and chronic inflammation. Not a pretty sight. So, well, how do I know the difference? Edema is edema, right? Well, is it? When you're looking at edema, edema is a symptom. I mean, we all know that. You know, it's multifactorial. It's usually a response to some type of an insult. It's pretty self-limiting. And it will usually respond to some type of treatment, whether it's diuretics, whether it's support, whatever it is, it'll usually respond. Lymphedema, however, is a pathological process. Your edema's been there for three months. In duration, it does not respond to any conservative medical treatment. You can't elevate the legs, make it go away. What you have is this accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. And this is a very toxic fluid. It's a protein-rich fluid. It sits there and just kind of bruised. Doesn't need to be there. Doesn't certainly do any good for the tissue. And this all happens because of that failure in that lymphatic system. So the difference up here, as you can see, there's a sprained ankle. That's a good old garden variety localized lymphedema, or edema. On the bottom, look at the feet. Can you see the change? Particularly in the, in the middle uh, picture there, those fissures in the toes, you can tell that that's been there a while. And it's going the wrong direction. It's going to get worse. That's a lymphedema. So what might you see in your patients? Well, we know you're going to see edema. D, you just said that. But what kind of edema is it? It's a non-pitting edema. Okay? After those early stages, and we'll talk about that again in just a second, you don't see pitting. Okay? This is a very firm. What you'll see is the, those uh, tough areas in the skin. You know, they become what you'll see us document a lot, fibrotic. You can actually feel those lines of demarcation as you're palpating down that extremity of the areas that are soft, and then they become very fibrotic. Uh, it's an asymmetrical presentation. Rarely in lymphedema are they going to be the same. What about in your heart failure patients? I mean, if they're overloaded, you're going to see some symmetry to that typically. But you won't see that in a lymphedema. You can have it on both sides. You can have it on an upper and lower, but they won't be symmetrical. One of the things you'll see a lot of times documented, we'll describe it as an inverted bowling pin. If you think about how you've seen those legs, particularly below the knee, that's what you see. And of course, the gosh awful weeping, lymphorrhea. When you have weeping, you're basically pouring toxic acid onto the skin. It damages the skin. The biggest problem that we have is protecting the skin when you have cases of weeping and, and uh, lymphorrhea. It's terrible. It smells bad. It looks bad. It eats your skin up. It builds up layer after layer after layer. It's nasty stuff. Now, believe it or not, those legs are not painful, typically. Not pain in the way that we would say, oh my gosh, that hurts. It's not that kind of pain. It's more of a discomfort because you've got some heaviness. I mean, some of these limbs are three times the size of the other one. So that's definitely uncomfortable, but it's not the kind of pain like you would think about. I need a pain shot for that. Though some people probably would try that. But it's not painful. The humpback appearance from the invasion of the foot is a classic sign. Mm -hmm. that, that foot will be just like that big old puffy foot. Lymphedema invades the foot, okay? Only in one case, does it not? A positive stimmer sign, we all know that. You try to grab the back of the toes and give them a pinch, and it doesn't work. So those are the things that you're going to see right there on the physical exam that you're doing every day in your office. Here's those stages I was talking about. You know, in medicine, everything's got to have like a nice chart with stages and all that stuff so that we can be sure they're documenting that for the insurance companies and all that good stuff. Well, stage zero is the subclinical stage, of course. We don't really know anything's going on. It is, but we don't know it. I'm not going to find it then. You're not going to find it then. It's just there. Uh, then it starts sneaking up on us, but still when we get to stage one, we're probably going to miss that. That's early on in the process. You still got a little bit of pitting going on there. You might see a little resolution with some medical therapy. They might raise their feet up a little bit. You could put them in some compression socks, and you might see a little bit of, of a decrease in that. Because, you know, we're not talking about big volumes there. But then, here we go. All of a sudden, it turns your back, and you're now at stage two. These people then are approaching now a 50% increase in their volume. This stuff does not go away with elevation. It's beginning not to pit. 
This is your classic definition that we talked about earlier about what is lymphedema. And then stage three, we're in trouble. Okay, we have uh, horrible fibrosis. We have fissures in the skin that are so deep that we got to, what did they say last night? And, and that hikers, we got to rope up to go in there to clean that out so somebody can pull us out if we get stuck in those fissures because they're really, really nasty. They're really terrible. And these patients uh, need a lot, a lot of work, a lot of skin care, a lot of supportive therapy. And again, we're at 50% and it just goes up from there, folks. Y'all have seen my 600 pound life, right? So what kind of complications do we see with this? Functional impairment is the biggie. These folks are going to have lots of secondary musculoskeletal issues with their back, with their joints, because they're dragging around this big leg or, you know, this arm. You have to know that in some sources, I found as many up to 10% of the people who have lymphedema will have a, either loss of their employment or a significant change in the role that they currently hold because of this functional impairment that ensues from this condition. And then, what about the psychological impact? Oftentimes that's overlooked. These folks are miserable. They're embarrassed. They don't want you to look at it. They don't want you to touch it. They go to Sunday school and somebody who they haven't seen in a while says, oh honey, your arm is so swollen. They're mortified. They can't put on their strappy sandals in the summertime. They can't do, they can't wear shoes. That's embarrassing. It's not just a functional thing. That's not an ideal thing. That's an emotional thing for these patients. And it's real, I promise you. And then we get to the nasty stuff like bacterial and fungal infections. And I, I can't even, I mean, I, I, Dr. Dixon, I'm sorry, but that video was pretty nasty. But this stuff right here, it's pretty, pretty rank. Um, and and you, have to, you have to treat that aggressively. There's no such thing as a little cellulitis in a patient with lymphedema. It can be life-threatening. These people are in the hospital. They're on, on IV antibiotics, and not, not just once, not twice, but over and over. If you've got a real lymphedema case, these people are sick. When they come in and you see that bright red leg, you go, oh, boy, call the ER, tell them we're, we need a direct admit because this patient's coming over. There's some other complications that are a lot more rare, tumors, lymphangial sarcomas, you do see those, but they're, they're more rare. So how do we diagnose it? Well, unfortunately, there's not that test on our order set that we can say, do this and let's diagnose lymphedema. There's also not that test for you, unfortunately. It is truly one of those things that we cliche things that we say, diagnosis of exclu exclusion. It's really true. You're going to make this diagnosis based on your his history and your physical. Right. Uh, somebody said that earlier in one of the presentations, and Dr. Hyman, I think, is, is that your history is going to be your guide. And we know that, but we like to use those diagnostic tests. But that's where it's going to be. We already said it can be primary or secondary, and I would be remiss if I didn't tell you this can be genetic. I was talking to a, another attendee uh, yesterday in the APN session, and you know we were talking about a patient that she has, but that patient's mother also had lymphedema. So there is a genetic connection there, and, and we have to pay attention to that, and that's where that history comes in. Um, we do use ultrasound some, uh, you know, and you're really with ultrasound is because you're looking to see if there's any other things going on. We got any of that venous inf insufficiency that my team was talking to you about yesterday. Uh, you're looking for underlying things there with that ultrasound. And if you're fortunate, and we are, to have uh, registered vascular technicians who specialize in vascular ultrasound, then, you know, they can say, hey, D, come and look at this. Look how much fluid I found here in this interstitial space. That's lymphedema. And they love it when they can do that. They come in and say, like, hey, D, I found some lymphedema. You know, so and it's a pretty cool thing. Lymphography and lymphocentography are rarely used. You see that more in the academic centers. And let's be honest, it really doesn't change things much. MRI and CT can be useful in detecting any uh, lymphatic instruction like a, obstruction like a tumor. Here's some presentations that you might see that are quite challenging. Um, this patient in the top here has what we call a flebo lymphedema. You want to guess what that is? Well, that's venous insufficiency and lymphedema together. You have to treat both if you're going to get a good outcome for this patient. 
look in the second here, we could look through here and think, well, you know, that, that first slide there, first picture, that doesn't look that bad. Look at the second one and then to the third. What do you notice about this? You notice that the feet are spared here. And if you could see the rest of these bodies, you know, you just automatically say, well, they need to, you know, they need some bariatric surgery, need to go on a diet, that kind of thing. Well, that may be true, but if you could see the rest of their body, these people have the tiny little feet, they have an upper body that looks fairly normal. I mean, you know, if they're heavy, they are going to have some weight there, but it's going to be disproportionate in its distribution. That is lipedema or lipolympedema. This requires a lot of supportive therapy. You're not going to get a lot of... Uh, reduction, you'll get some, but this is a lifelong process of teaching them how to deal with that through support, custom support. And then my nemesis at the bottom for all these years, peripheral arterial disease, that patient has occult arterial disease, and look at the foot, you can see that, invading the, there's the hump back, there's the toes, but if we don't treat that underlying arterial disease, um, that patient's going to be in a world of hurt. So what do you do? Well, you focus on reducing the volume, preserving whatever lymphatic function that you have, and preventing reaccumulation. Folks, there's no cure for lymphedema, and you must tell your patients that. When you send them to me, and they're going to be so proud, and I'm going to say, you know, they were absolutely right. Sweetie, you've got lymphedema. It's a good thing that they got you, you know, in for some therapy and all that. But... There's no cure. So you go from being the hero to zero because you said, hey, I'm going to send them over to the lymphedema therapist and they're going to cure that lymphedema. We're not going to cure lymphedema. There is no such. What we are going to do is we're going to focus on managing those symptoms, preventing complications, and then we're going to do some very aggressive therapy. It comes in two phases, intensive in-center and then at-home self-management. In-center, we're going to take those patients through a program called Complete Decongestive Therapy. In that, we do some actual hands-on physical therapy to move that fluid. One of the things that happens with lymphedema is, let's say we have a dysfunction in the, the lymph nodes in the groin, or maybe in a breast cancer patient under the axilla from the radiation, maybe you excise some. What you have to do is you have to direct that fluid elsewhere, okay? And we do that with a manual moving of that fluid. We also do bandaging and compression. It's very specific exercise and skin care and... Uh, also, some compression pumps, but you have to be very careful with that. And this is what it looks like. You can tell. This is a participation activity. It's not a spectator sport. So we are the Vein and Vascular Institute at the Arkansas Heart Hospital. Why do you want to send your patients to us? Because we're the only, we're the only specialty center dedicated to vascular disease in the region. Our staff is experienced. This is what they do. You've seen our doctors. You've met some of our staff. This is what we do, latest technology and treatment. Our therapists, this is what sets us apart from everybody else. Our therapists are licensed nurses, okay? They're experienced. They're trained. They know peripheral arterial disease. They know venous insufficiency, and they know lymphedema. You won't get that everywhere else. Why is that important, you say? Why is it so important they're nurses? Because we'll take the sick patients, okay? We have the resources to take care of your patients. There you go. We're successful. There it is, right there. Six weeks of therapy. That's Ed. Ed's a happy guy. He had all the big uglies that you can imagine. And there he goes. Six weeks. This is where we go. This is who we are. Anytime, give us a call. If we're not there yet, give me a minute. We'll get there soon. Okay, thank you.